Hey, this is um, Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 1. This is our CUSD uh, homework packet that goes with our curriculum. So we have, first of all today, some exponent review. And so as always, the first two are the questions that go with the lesson to kind of see how much did you get. And I usually skip those ones there. So the first one just says, what is the value of 3 to the 4th power? So you need to evaluate that one to decide what that's going to be. Um, and then how many times bigger is 3 to the 15th compared to 3 to the 12th? So what they're asking you to do here, for example, is to compare something like, let's say I had 2 to the 8th power compared to 2 to the 4th power, okay? So 2 to the 8th power is like saying 2 8 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all multiplied together. I'm comparing that to the fourth power. One, two, three, four. So there's the two different things I'm comparing there. And when I compare those, I can really think about, okay, I'm thinking about kind of greater than less than type of comparison there, right? Or how many times bigger, um, times bigger it might be. And I can see here that I have one, two, three, four of those, which would reduce the four of those of there, meaning that this one has four additional twos compared to that one. So for sure I could say this one is definitely larger. That's pretty easy to say. But if I'm saying how many times bigger, I want to look at how many times bigger that is. And then I can multiply what's left. I can say, well, this is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So this one is actually 16 times larger than that one right there. So you look at how many, what numbers are left on the other side, multiply it together to tell you how many times larger it is to the other one that you had. That's the idea there. So you want to do that for 3 to the 15th compared to 3 to the 12th. All right, moving down to your odd ones here. Right, expression oh. using an exponent. So here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nines. So this is my base. My base is going to stay 9. All right, and I see how many there are, which was five. You'll do the same thing for the fraction one here. Moving down to the odd ones over here, we have look at five and seven. To evaluate just means we're gonna just solve it essentially. This is five to the third power, which is five times five times five. And five times five is 25. And then 25 times five is 125. So that's our solution for that one there. The fraction ones are the same thing, whether it be to the second power or third power. It just means I write this base that many times, two times. One to the fourth, or one fourth times one fourth. And remember with the fractions, we just multiply straight across, top and bottom. So we have one over four times four is 16. All right, down below, I have some review here, basically, We're looking at 9, 11, and 13. For number 9, we can either divide both sides by 6 to start with, or we can distribute by placing that inside of here. Let's go ahead and do distributing first of all. I'll try that one. So 6 times 4 is 24k. And then 6 times negative 7 is negative 42 equals negative 90. I'm going to add 42 to both sides. So that is canceled out. I'm left with 24k here equals, and then I have a 90 and a 42. Now the signs are different, so I want to find the difference. So I'm going to subtract, but I want to keep the one with a larger absolute value. So is that the negative or the positive? Well, the 90 is larger than 40, so we're going to keep the negative sign in our solution. So let's do 90 minus 42. I need to borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So I'd say negative 48. We're going to divide both sides by 24. And k equals 48 divided by 24 is actually 2, but it's going to be negative. So I'd say k equals negative 2. That's it for that one. Number 11. Again, I can distribute first of all, or I can um, I can actually divide by two, either one. Um, let's try to divide by two this time. Let's divide both sides by negative two, divide by negative two. So that eliminates it there. So on this side, I'm left with three plus seven r 
equals, well, what's half of 106? The reason I w went ahead and divided it is I know I can kind of think of, well, half of 10 is 5, and half of 6 is 3, and I have a positive divided by a negative, so I have a negative 53. Now I will subtract 3, oops, sorry, subtract 3 from both sides. And I have 7R, 53 and 53, they're both negative, so I find the sum, which is 56, and I keep the sign the same, so negative 56. Divide both sides by 7, and R equals 56 divided by 7 is 8. Keep it a negative because there's just one of them there, and that's it. Could you distribute first? Sure, you could. If I distributed, I'd have a negative 6 um, minus a negative 14R equals 106. I could certainly do that, or you could do that, and then you could solve from there. So that is something else you could do. All right, number 13. The first thing you want to do before we break this apart, okay, is I want to move this number over there. So I want to add 8 to both sides. So on the left, I have x over 2 equals. And 16, a negative 16 and a positive 8 means I'll find the difference. 16 minus 8 is 8. And the negative is larger than the positive. Well, in that case, in terms of absolute value. So we'll keep it negative. Now to get the x and 2 separated, I need to multiply both sides by 2. This is like x divided by 2. So now we're multiplying by 2 to eliminate that x will equal negative 8 times 2 is going to be a negative 16. All right, and that's it. Hope that helps you out a little bit. The rest are very similar. You can see in 12 and 14 you have other fractions. So first move your regular integer number over, and then you want to multiply by whatever that denominator is, but make sure you do it on both sides. Okay, so step 1 is here move it over, step two, multiply. So use this as a sample there for you. This one up here, same idea, you know, distribute, no problem, you can do that. And of course the rest we've already talked about. All right, have a great day, see you next time.